I'm live, but I've forgotten my apron. Welcome to your third day of baking on what I like to call Keeping Sane with Soph. Hopefully the kiddies are baking along today as well. We're going to be making chocolate chip cookies with an optional salted caramel center. Right, aprons on, hands are washed, and I've got a new setup that Jim did for me with my tripod, so my camera's a bit further away, but I've got my laptop here, so I'll be able to read your comments. Now, I'm going to wait a little bit before we get started, just so that people have time to share the link um, with some new people, um, and I'm going to bring the link up on here so that I can see your comments. Make sure the sound's up. Okay, there we go. We should be up and running. I'll press play on it. A bit weird watching myself there and watching myself there, but we're going to go for it. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our caramel started, if you're making caramel. Now, it doesn't matter if you are or if you aren't, it does add a little bit of extra something to the cookies. So, if you've made cookies before, this is a really nice upgrade for a normal cookie recipe. So, we're going to get our caramel on the go first. What you will need for your caramel is 100 grams of butter, salted or unsalted, doesn't matter, it's going to be salted caramel, so if you're using salted butter, just don't add the salt at the end. So, we're going to put 100 grams of butter in, I'm going to try and keep track of comments as well. Hi mum! My mum's watching. Hi mum, hope you're okay. So, we've got 100 grams of butter going in. I've used my big knife for this for some unknown reason. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our sugar into the butter straight away. With most caramels, when you see them make it, you put the sugar on to cook first. Um, and it's quite tricky because you have to get it to the right temperature and you have to leave it and not touch it and it all caramelises. And then in about two seconds it burns. Whereas this is a much simpler way of making a really good caramel for things like millionaire shortbread. So we've got our 100 grams of butter and now we're going to put in 100 grams of brown sugar. For anyone who has just tuned in, we are just making the caramel at the moment. So to start with, we're putting 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of brown sugar into a pan. There we go. I use soft brown sugar, muscovada sugar, because it has a really nice flavour, but you can use any kind of brown sugar really. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put our pan with our sugar and our butter onto the hob really, really low, really low temperature. What we want is for butter to start to melt and the sugar to dissolve but that's all we're looking for with the caramel at the minute we don't want it to be bubbling or too hot so keep it on the lowest heat you can just until the sugar starts to melt and no the butter melts and the sugar dissolves so now then the next thing that we need to do to prepare is our trays. If you're doing just normal flat cookies without any caramel, then you will need your baking tray with either baking parchment or if you've buttered it like we did for the scones, that's good as well. If you are going to be doing the caramel cups, then we're going to put our cookies into cupcakes, a cupcake tray, because we want to try and get a little dip in there so we can pour in some caramel. Now, you can, if you want, try and cut out circles to line the bottom of each one, but it's really fiddly and it takes a lot of time. So all I've done is I've rubbed the cupcake tray with some butter and now I'm going to sprinkle a teeny tiny bit of flour into each one. Now, all this is going to do is give it a really good coating on the bottom of each of the cupcake holders, little holes so that the cookies don't stick. They're pretty good because there's a lot of butter in the, sh in the cookies. They tend not to stick anyway, but if they do, it becomes quite a mess when you take them out of the oven. So, shake, shake the flour around in there. Give it a bit of a shake. As I say, if you are, you bang out the excess into the sink. And there we go, buttered and floured and ready for cookies. If you're just doing flat cookies, don't worry about that, you can just use your baking tray. Now, I'm going to check on the sugar and the butter. 
That's melting nice and slow. So we're going to leave that melting while we get other things prepared for our cookies. So the next thing that you're going to need to do, and kiddies, you might want to let mom or dad or whoever's helping you do this for you because you need a big sharp knife. If you are using chocolate chunks for your cookies, then there's nothing extra to do. But if you are using a bar of chocolate, like I am, you are going to need to chop up your chocolate. So I'm going to move my tripod back so that you can see, hopefully, a bit more of what I'm doing uh, on the screen. Let's have a look. Has that helped? No, it hasn't. Let's just put it further away. Let's not worry. We'll move it forward again. Oh, hang on. I've, aha! There we go. Got it. Right. Hello. You can't see my face, but at least you can see what I'm doing down here. So, I've got half a bar of chocolate because Jim got into the fridge last night and ate some of it. Not really. It was me. And we're just going to chop up our bar of chocolate. Now, it doesn't matter what chocolate you're using. Everything works well. I'm going to be using dark chocolate and a little bit of white chocolate as well because I found some white chocolate in the fridge and I don't like anything to go to waste so all I'm doing is cutting long ways down the chocolate then turn it around, watch your fingers and go the other way just chopping the chocolate into chunks they don't have to be too small but make sure that they're kind of relatively equal. You'll get like little shards and little flakes of chocolate as well, but that is just going to add to the flavour. So that's our dark chocolate all ready to go. Nice big chunks. I'm going to chop up the white chocolate now. I only found a little bit, but I'm going to put that in. If you're using dairy, milk or whatever you're using, it will all work well, add to the flavour. If you've got any like leftover chocolate as well, if you've got any little chocolate bars and things like that, you can chop them up and put them in as well. The cookies don't stay in the oven very long, so you don't have to worry about the chocolate going funny in the oven. Right, there we go. That's the difficult bit done. Dark chocolate and white chocolate chunks. Now, I'm going to put that to one side because we don't need that yet. And now we can get started on our cookies. So, the first thing that we are going to do for our cookies is we are going to melt some butter. So, use a bowl or a jug or a dish, anything that you're happy to put into the microwave. And we're going to put our butter into that to melt. Use a butter knife. So, we are going to be using 100 grams of butter. I've left this out of the fridge so it's already quite soft and the idea is we're going to put it into the microwave, turn this on, so you want 100 grams of butter going into any microwavable dish um, and we don't want it to get too hot, we literally just want it to be liquidy, as liquidy as possible. So here my butter is going in. What is Jess laughing at? Hello. Don't worry, Danny, at the very start, we just made our caramel. So if people are just tuning in and you missed the start, we were getting our caramel onto the hob to start to heat up. We put 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of brown sugar into our pan. And we're gonna check on it now and see how it's getting on. It's melting really nice and slowly, which is what we want. So every so often, give it a bit of a stir. It's gonna look quite odd. It's gonna look a lot like this so if you can see that it looks like the butter and the sugar are separate but as it heats up the two will come together so just leave it on a really low heat let it warm up and keep mixing it every so often if you can to get the sugar dissolved and mixed into the butter so we can leave that on the hob for a few more seconds while we put our butter into the microwave got some more butter here. So how's everyone doing? Has anyone missed anything? So Keith has been out and got all the baking things, the oven's on, 
ways the way scales have died. No, you know what, Nikki? I just kind of wing it um, and just do it by eye. Just kind of blob everything in. You can't really go too wrong with the cookies. The caramel is a little bit more specific, but with cookies, you can kind of throw it all in. You're going to get something edible at the end of it anyway. If you add more flour, they tend to be a bit more like crunchy. If you add too much sugar, they tend to be a little bit chewier, things like that. So whatever you do, it's going to taste good. Right, so we've got 100 grams of butter there, and I'm going to put it in the microwave for just 10 seconds, just to help it to warm up. Do it at 10 second intervals, because we want it to melt, but we don't want it to be too hot, because it tends to make the cookies greasy if it's too hot. Right, I'm going to clean up a bit as I go along. Have a look at our butter. Okay, it's starting to melt there, you can see. I'm going to put it in for another 10 seconds. And we're going to check out our caramel. Okay, now then, at this point, if your caramel's at the same stage as mine, all the butter should be melted. Try and show you this as closely as I can. All the butter should be melted, but it should be quite separate still. Again, this is not a problem. It will come together. You just have to keep mixing it. Right, I'm going to concentrate on the caramel now for a second. I'm going to leave the butter in the microwave. So everyone that's doing caramel, now what you need to measure out is 100 mils of double cream. There is a really good recipe for this caramel using condensed milk. So, but condensed milk, um, you kind of need to use the whole tin, whereas this you can use for other things. So I'm measuring out 100 grams or 100 mils of double cream. This is for our caramel. If you're not making caramel, don't worry about the double cream. Keep melting your butter real slow. That's our double cream. We're gonna put it over here next to our pan and I'm gonna show people the caramel. If you're not making caramel, this is gonna be a bit boring for you, I apologize, but this is kind of the important part of the caramel. So I just wanna make sure that we don't miss this. So the heat is still on nice and low. Still looks quite separate, but all of our butter is melted and our sugar is pretty much all dissolved. The wonderful thing about doing caramel like this is you don't have to worry about sugar thermometers, you don't have to worry about getting that caramelization on white sugar because the brown sugar gives you the flavor all on its own. It's quite difficult doing it with um, normal sugar. It can be done but it takes a lot more time and you really have to sit and watch it as it goes. Right, now, hopefully, your sugar should start to come together with your butter. Around the edges, you've still got a bit of runny butter like sort of lying on the top of the sugar, but it should be starting to all come together now. We're keeping it on a low heat still. I haven't hired up the heat yet. Keep on stirring it at this point and that'll help the butter to melt into the sugar. Hi everyone who's watching, thanks for watching. This is generally keeping me sane so I'm hoping it's kind of cheering everybody else up as well. Right, now then, once all your butter has mixed into your caramel, mixed into your sugar and it's starting to get kind of a thicker consistency to it, we can higher up the heat. Once again, if people are just tuning in and you're not making caramel, you really haven't missed much and I will go over the steps that we've already done for the basic cookies. If you're making caramel, this is the fun bit. So this is gonna to start to get really bubbly now. Kids, if you're doing this at home, please be careful because this is when it starts to get really, really hot. Sugar can get to crazy temperatures and it will burn you really quickly, so be careful. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on mixing it quite quickly just to make sure that all that sugar stays combined with the butter. It will start to look quite frothy, that's good as well. And we want this to keep bubbling away for a good 30 seconds to a minute. I'm gonna turn the heat up a bit more. So your heat should pretty much be on full now. I'm gonna let it bubble up. 
keep mixing it just to stop it from burning on the bottom of the pan. That's perfect. You should have already measured out your double cream. You need 100 mils of double cream to go into this. I'm going to let it keep bubbling away. Sorry for everyone not making caramel. I hope this is not too boring for you, but maybe you might like to try this afterwards and you can always add the caramel to your cookies at a later date. Also, this caramel will last, so once it's made, if you don't use all of it, keep it in the fridge and it's really nice on like ice cream or putting on top of other cakes and things. Right, so that's had a good minute bubbling away. Now, we're going to add our double cream. We're going to take it off the heat for now. Turn that off and we're going to add our double cream. Now, I've only got one hand because I'm holding my camera, but you want to mix as you go with this and add it all in one go. So we're going to pour in all of our double cream, all in one go, and mix. There's our double cream. Mix it all in. It will still be bubbling, so be careful. It's going to be really, really hot. The double cream will cool down the caramel and add a really nice creamy richness to it. Right, now we're going to put that back on the heat higher our heat up and this only needs about 30 seconds more right keep stirring it so it doesn't burn it'll take a couple of seconds for it to get back up to temperature with that cream in there just going to make sure that my hob is on high as you can see I'm just using my smallest burner but putting it onto its highest setting we don't want to go too crazy oh be careful of splashes this is really really hot so be careful it doesn't splash you. If it does, straight under the cold tap. <laughs> I don't want anyone to sue me for this. <laughs> Please don't burn yourselves. Right, starting to bubble again. Like I say, this will last. So if you have any leftover from your cookie cups, or if you fancy just making it, trying to make it another time, then you can keep it in the fridge and then add it to other recipes. In fact, we made Viennese whirls on Wednesday. This would be really nice to add to the middle of a Viennese whirl instead of jam. Right, now this needs another minute or so. At that, once it gets to that bubbling stage like that, really bubbly, it needs 30 seconds to a minute from that stage. You don't need to take the temperature of it or anything like that. If you stick to what I've kind of told you, wait for it to be really bubbling up and then set a little timer for a minute and keep stirring it you will have the perfect consistency of caramel and it pretty much works every time now you can use condensed milk with this as well instead of your double cream but it's pretty much double the recipe so it's 200 grams of sugar 200 grams of butter and one tin of condensed milk you don't need that much caramel for this recipe so I've kind of halved it and used the double cream instead right keep that bubbling away keep it off the edges this is going to give you a really nice thick caramel, nothing runny, it'll be more like um, a chewy caramel, kind of like for millionaire shortbread, in fact it's perfect for millionaire shortbread. So if you've ever wanted to make that, I know Tom has, then you make a basic shortbread recipe, make, whip, whip up this caramel and then top it with chocolate and you're all done. Right, that has been bubbling for a perfect amount of time and leave it a little bit longer it should start to come away from the edges of the pan as you can see it starts to get quite thick and gloopy this is what you want you want it to be really really thick if you don't leave it bubbling long enough it's going to be too soft and it will just run out of the cookies leave that bubbling away for a bit longer we just keep stirring it so that it doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan but it doesn't need to be constantly stirred if you don't want to I'm keeping an eye on it so it doesn't burn right now that should be our caramel done I'm going to turn the heat off now this needs to cool down quite considerably before we can use it so I'm going to clean off my spatula put that to one side move this off the heat and we're literally just going to leave that to cool we're going to leave it to cool for about 
half an hour while we're making our cookies and then we can use it. Don't worry if it keeps bubbling even off the heat, that's pretty much what it does. Right, now I'm going to set this back up and we can get on with the cookies. So, hi again! Hopefully that wasn't too boring for people not making caramel. We can get on with our cookies now. So, the first step was to put 100 grams of butter into a microwavable dish and start melting it in the microwave. As I said before, we don't want it to be too hot, but we do want it to be melted. So I'm putting it in the microwave for 10 seconds at a time. Each time it comes out, I'm just giving it a bit of a swish around to make sure that it's melting, but not getting too hot. Then we're gonna put our sugar into our bowl. So we need 100 grams of caster sugar. 100 grams of caster sugar and we're going to use 150 grams of brown sugar. Now you can top up one with the other so if you're running low on anything let's say you've only got 100 grams of brown sugar then put in 150 grams of caster sugar as long as you've got in total 250 grams all together you will be fine, which is actually what I'm going to do. Top that up to 250. Great, so in there you should have 100 grams of caster sugar, 150 grams of brown sugar and we're going to check on our butter again. How's everyone doing? Is everyone keeping up okay? You doing alright Kate? <laughs> right, that's what we need. We just want it to be melted, we don't want it to be too hot. That's pretty much perfect. Shouldn't start to bubble or boil in the microwave. Once it's liquid, it's perfect. Right, and we're just gonna chuck it in with our sugar. Don't worry, there's still some lumps in your butter. Once it gets to mostly melted, those lumps will kind of break down, so it'll be fine. Use your spoons and spatulas to scrape all your butter out of your jug or your bowl. Right, now then, we need a whisk. I'm going to be using just a normal hand whisk, but if you have an electric whisk, this does make it a lot quicker. So use your electric whisk if you've got one. Right, we're just going to whisk it all together. Kids, get in there with the whisk. Let's go really quick so that it all comes together. Right, it should be looking like this. Should be getting quite pale. Oh, it's looking good. It smells really good as well. That's the one nice thing about using muscovado sugar, is it has a really nice, rich, caramelly flavour on its own. Right, there we go. Bit of a workout for you. Now we're going to add an egg. My lovely mum and dad sent me some eggs today so that I had some for this. Now, if you're not used to breaking eggs, I'd suggest put breaking it into a separate bowl first to make sure that you don't get any shell in there. But <laughs> I do this all the time. <laughs> Not really, I'm absolutely rubbish at it. But there we go, no shell. Then you're gonna carefully mix your egg in to your butter and your sugar. It starts to get a, look a bit separated, but if you just keep going with it, it does come together. Right, what you're looking for is for all those bits of the brown sugar to be incorporated because they tend to get a little bit chunky, the, the soft brown sugar, and they don't always mix so well. So keep mixing it. Kids, get your whisks in there, whisk it up. I can see some little lumps of brown sugar still, so I'm going to keep going. Keep mixing. It's going to be really runny, like proper bloop, gloopy by the end of it. That's perfect, just what we want. And it should look quite pale compared to when we started whisking. Keep going with that for a bit. This is where it's a lot easier if you use an electric hand whisk, but I thought some people might not have them. So if I use a hand, a simple hand whisk, then it kind of keeps everyone involved. Right, that's looking good. There's still a few little lumps of brown sugar, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. We'll just add a bit of extra flavor. Put that in my jug, ready for washing later. Now, we are going to sieve into this our flour and baking powder. Trusty sieve, 
Oh, is it going to drop? That'll be all right. So, what we need is plain flour, and we're going to put in 225 grams of plain flour. Two hundred and twenty-five grams, and then we're going to add a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of baking powder. So the reason why we are using plain flour and baking powder for this recipe instead of just using self-raising flour is because of the quantity. Self-raising flour has quite a lot of baking powder in, whereas we really only need half a teaspoon per a lot of flour which means that it's a lot lower quantity of baking powder to flour ratio which means that your cookies if you don't want the cookies to rise it's not a cake it should be flat and biscuity so we don't want it to rise too much now i'm just going to put in half a teaspoon into there and then sieve this in give it a bit of a shake and a flip around now, if anybody missed the very start of the uh, video, we were getting our caramel sorted, but we were also chopping up our bar of chocolate. So, if you haven't done that, don't worry, I'll give you a bit of time to catch up while we are mixing our flour in. Right, so that's the flour sipped in there. And then we are going to use our butter spatula, why not? to mix this in. Fold it all in. Take it slow so that your flour doesn't decide to jump out of the bowl. Mix it all in. It doesn't need to be folded. You're not worrying about keeping air into this recipe, so just mix it in any which way you like until all the flour is incorporated with all of the sugar butter and egg mixture. Weird, it's looking good. Some of my flour is jumping out of my bowl and all over the place. So try not to get too messy. So tomorrow's recipe, I was kind of torn between macaroons or chocolate brownies because macaroons are really lovely, I love macaroons, but they're a bit tricky to make. Um, but they're good fun because the kids can like add different colours to them and you can decorate them with sprinkles. So it's up to you guys really. I'll let you guys decide through this video whether you want to make brownies tomorrow or macaroons. We'll go with what you think. Um, but I think I'm going to have to start doing some healthier recipes because by the end of this week you're going to have a shed load of cake in your house. And if you're like me, and there's only me and Jim here, and we can't go out, there's only us who's going to eat it. So I might try and do a bit of a healthy recipe on Saturday. Right, so now we should have caramel cooling on the hob, if you've done caramel. Um, we've got our cookie base here, which is your sugars, caster sugar and brown sugar, butter, your egg, and your flour and baking powder. Now this is our chopped up chocolate bar. If you're using chocolate chunks or anything like that, this is when we're going to chuck them in. Now, I'm using a bit of everything because I had some different things in my cupboards. So I'm using some dark chocolate chunks, I'm using a bit of a white chocolate bar that I chopped up, and a bit of a dark chocolate bar that I chopped up. But you can literally put anything you like into these. You could put dried fruit and nut in there. Just think of Millie's Cookies and all the different flavours that they have at Millie's Cookies. And you can pretty much put anything you want in. I give my board a little tap so that all the little crumbs go in there. And then we're going to mix these in. Now, you've got a bit of a solid dough now, so it's a bit tricky to mix in the chips. But keep going with it. They will incorporate eventually. So you've just kind of got to keep flipping it around, mushing in the chocolate chunks. Are you doing well, Zoe? How's it going? Zoe's not a baker, people, and Zoe's baking with me today. I'm very proud. Hopefully this all turns out well. Right. Now, what you should have, if you've been keeping up, is a big blob. A big blob.
blob of cookie dough with chocolate chips. Now please resist the urge to eat the cookie dough because it does have a raw egg in it. If you want to try making edible cookie dough, just leave out the uh, egg. Some people say that it's good to bake the flour in the oven to get rid of any impurities in there and germs and stuff. But generally, if you've bought a good flour, then you can literally do exactly the same recipe, miss out the egg, and you've got edible cookie dough. Right, that is pretty much perfect. So, move that out of the way. We're gonna tidy off our working area a little bit so that we can roll out our cookies. Now, the general thing with cookies is they're not gonna hold a shape. So if you're using a cookie cutter, then do something simple like a square or a heart because they're really not gonna hold much shape. Once you get them in the oven, they kind of go blur and splat. So stick to a round shape and you can't go wrong. I'm gonna do a couple of each to show, if you're doing uh, cookie cups with caramel in, then I'll show you how to make them. And in general, I'll show you how to do just normal cookies as well, but everyone just doing normal cookies. Now, this couldn't be more simple. You're literally gonna spoon out, I'm gonna get a spoon. Trusty spoon. Spoon out a little blob of your cookie dough. Put it into your hands and make it into a ball. Then you're gonna put it onto your baking tray and flatten it down. And that is it's as simple as that. How easy is that? Kids, if you're using cookie cutters, get creative, do some different shapes. I'm not gonna lie, they are gonna go blurt in the oven, so don't be too creative, but roll them up, roll them into a ball, onto the tray, and flatten them out. Perfect. Don't worry about doing them too thin, because the thicker they are, the chewy they will be, the chewier they will be. So, There we go, flatten them out. Perfect. So if you're doing normal cookies, carry on like that. I'm going to check on the oven. Your oven should be on and heating up to 180 degrees. Don't worry if you've only just put it on. Whack it up so that it starts to warm up. I'm going to check on our caramel as well for anybody using caramel. Make sure that that's cooling down nicely. You can give it a little bit of a stir. That's my lovely caramel, if you can see that. Now, for anyone doing caramel, we're gonna add a teaspoon of sugar to this, uh, salt to this now, to make it salted caramel. Now, I don't have any spoonable table salt, so I'm gonna be using my grinder, but you can kind of just judge it by eye. Put in around about a teaspoon of salt into your caramel and mix it all in. I know it seems a bit odd putting salt into caramel, but the more you put in, the better. It's pretty much just sugar, so it can take quite a lot of salt to balance out that flavour. Oh, look at that. That is looking perfect. Now it does get a lot firmer than this. This is why we've done it early, because this is still very hot. By the time it's cooled down completely, this will be like a, a biteable caramel, not quite chewy, but a biteable caramel. So mix that salt all in, and we're going to leave that back over here to cool. Now, for anybody doing caramel cookie cups, I'm going to show you how to put your cookies into the shape, into the moulds. So we're going to do exactly the same as you're doing for normal cookies. We're going to roll it into a ball. But instead of flattening that out into the tray, once it's in a ball, we're going to press it into our hands. Hopefully you've washed your hands. Not that I'm going to be sharing these with anybody, because I cannot leave my house, like most people. Stay at home and save lives. Right, so we've got like a cookie shape, and we're going to press it into the bottom of the muffin tin. Spread it up the sides a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, that's literally all you're looking for, just so that there's a little well in the bottom. Keep going with that, roll it into the ball, flatten it out with your hands, and then press it in to the muffin tin. 
Make sure you're not putting too much in because this will kind of spread about in the oven once it heats up. Keep going with this. How's everyone getting on? Anyone got any questions for me while we're balling up our cookies? You should sing a song. <laughs> I'm not going to sing a song. I um, signed up to Disney Plus for a free week's trial um, and I've been watching Disney films all day long and I was trying to do some hair tutorials for work yesterday, watched it back and realised I was singing Tangled while doing my hair. So we're not going to be doing that again. Ellen Toes and Macaroons, Danny Brownies, oh see, I need some more. I need some more votes for what you want to make tomorrow. Press that cookie dough into your cups. Does anyone have any issues? Is everyone's caramel going all right if you're making caramel? Rich brownies, the brownies are really good. I think I'll share that recipe with you at some point anyway, because it is the best brownie recipe ever. Right, brownies, Jacob Bailey wants brownies. I could probably drop you some brownies as well once I make them. So it stops me and Jim from eating them all. We're going to get so fat, honestly. This is why I'm trying to think of healthy recipes to do with you. Because at the moment, you've got scones, Viennese whirls, caramel cookies, and now tomorrow you'll have brownies or macaroons. Hey, that sounds like the making of a very good afternoon tea. Right, okay, so kids, if you're at home baking with parents right now, then I have a job for you. On Saturday, because mum and dad, I'm guessing, have been quite stressed this week. Maybe they're having to teach your schoolwork and be your teachers like they're not used to. So if you've been baking along with me this week, what I want you to do on Saturday is get together all the things you've made. Make mum and dad a nice cup of tea or a glass of wine. Let's go with a glass of wine is a much better idea. And make them a little afternoon tea with all the wonderful things that you've been baking. Sounds great. In fact, they need Prosecco. They need Prosecco because that's how we roll with afternoon teas these days. Right, so we're gonna keep going with this. We're rolling out our cookie, like rolling our cookie dough into balls, then pressing it into our cupcake tray. Or if you're just doing normal cookies, you should be rolling your cookies into balls and then flattening them out onto your tray. Make sure you're leaving a good gap between each one if you're using a baking tray because they will spread out a bit in the oven. Right, I'm going to keep going with this. See, this is the nice thing about using a bar of chocolate. You get some really great big chunks of chocolate in there and they will be amazing once they're all cooked. Right, I've got one more mm -hmm. cupcake hole to go and then I'm going to roll the rest out and put it on the normal baking tray. Right, press this into the last one. So, if you're doing caramel cookie cups, your baking tray or your muffin tin should look a bit like that, with all your cookie dough all spread into them. If you're doing conventional cookies, your baking tray should look a bit like this, with your cookies rolled into balls and then flattened out onto the tray. Simple as that. Don't have to be too precise with the measurements because they're going to taste good anyway. Roll them into balls. Cream eggs. Have you put cream eggs in? Ellen, what a legend. This is the thing. If you've got any sort of chocolate lying around the house, cream eggs, uh, maybe some Smarties, maybe some Rolos, chop up some Rolos and put them in to your cookie dough. Get adventurous with your fillings. Just make some even better. Right, now that's used up all of my cookie dough now. So I've got some on a tray and I've got some in my muffin tin. And that is it, they are ready to go in the oven. Right, I'm going to check on the temperature of my oven. I'm not going to lie, it's a bit temperamental so I've got to keep an eye on it. And because I've got two trays, I'm going to put one on top of the other with the cupcake case on top. If you're just doing one tray, just dog them in in the middle shelf. Now these won't take too long, we're going to put them in for 7 minutes because the worst thing that you can do to an American style cookie is over bake it. 
If you over bake it, they turn into just normal crunchy cookies, whereas we want gooey, chewy cookies. So, we're going to do seven minutes. And we're a go. Right, let's answer some, any questions for me? Brownies, brownies, brownies. You know what, I think it's going to be brownies tomorrow. I'm going to wash my hands because they're covered in cookies. Kids, if you've been using your hands to ball up your cookies, go get them washed. Right, wash all of this cookie dough off. We'll have a look at the votes for what people want to make tomorrow. Oh, I'm wearing an apron. I can just dry my hands on my apron. Right, I'm going to prop this up a bit so people can see me. Hey, Bella! Right, let's have a look. Mine is still dry. What's still dry, Bella? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's have a look. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Pitchford has left her children in the kitchen baking unattended. Sarah, you are braver than I would be. Uh, what are we doing with the caramel? I'm glad you asked, Zoe. So, your caramel should be cooling still. Oh, yeah, look, it's getting thicker, thicker by the minute. What we're going to do with the caramel is put it into the cookies once they're out of the oven. If you put them in the cookies while they're in the oven, it goes into a big blobby mush and just melts into nothing. So this is why we've made this early, because we need it to cool to a consistency that will sit in the cup of the cookie and go firm. <laughs> I feel like there was a lot of innuendos in there, but I'm not going to think too much about it. So. The caramel is cooling perfectly. Hopefully your caramel should look something like this, everybody. Because that is going to go into our cookie cups once they come out of the oven. Now don't be alarmed when you're checking on your cookies because generally, even when they're in the muffin tray, they tend to kind of spread out. So when you take them out, it might look like they've just filled the bottom and you've not got a well anymore. But I'm going to show you how to sort that out, so don't panic if that's happening. Right, let's see if we've got any more questions. Rub them, rub them balls. Dun, dun, dun. And yeah, no, I cannot be on the telly. Uh, let's have a look. Brownies, brownies. I think the general consensus for baking tomorrow is brownies. So I've got my trusty recipe sheets here. I'm going to have to take you down from off Jim's marvellous erection to show you the recipe. <laughs> so for brownies tomorrow, this is what you're going to need. 200 grams of dark chocolate, 200 grams of butter, 225 grams of caster sugar, three eggs, 90 grams of plain flour, 30 grams of cocoa, and 200 grams of white chocolate. Now, a bar of white chocolate, the big bars in um, supermarkets, are generally 200 grams. So all you need is one bar of white chocolate. But for the brownies, you're better off getting a bar rather than chocolate chips because the best thing about the brownies is massive chunks of white chocolate. So if you get chocolate drops, they tend to melt into the brownie. If you get a bar of chocolate and cut it into chunks, it'll be a lot better. So that is what we're doing tomorrow, making brownies. Now let's check on our cookies. May as well take you down. Look, this is Jim's marvellous contraption, let's say. Oh, they look good. See how they've spread out a bit already? As they heat up and all the metal, uh, the, the uh, metal, the butter and sugar starts to melt, they spread out and get really nice and chewy. So we're going to leave them in there. The oven should be at 180 degrees. They've got a few more minutes before we need to check on them. But we're not going to bake them for too long because we want them nice and soft and gooey in the middle. If you want crunchy cookies, then just leave them in the oven a little bit longer. But the best, I mean the best ones are the gooey ones, let's face it. So, don't leave them in there too long. Right, let's see how we're getting on. Show us the ingredients again for tomorrow, no problem at all, Kate. I'll show you again, but don't worry because I'm going to put a post with the ingredients up after this video is finished and I'll also pop it up on there um, 
tomorrow with all the ingredients. So that's what you need. Dark, is that right? Yeah, dark chocolate, butter, caster sugar, eggs, plain flour, cocoa, and white chocolate. Let's put my this back up on here. Getting a lovely spread on our cookies there, Mike Bentley. I hope you're baking along as well. Right, kids, I hope you've uh, been helping mum and dad each day with cleaning up because like my mum always says, cleaning up is the most part, important part of baking. I'm going to put all these bits and bobs away because once our cookies come out, we're going to do some magic with the caramel. Stick all this away, put our butter away. How's everyone getting on? We can make macaroons. But we're doing brownies tomorrow now, Laura. You've missed the vote, unfortunately. They voted for brownies, so it's brownies tomorrow and then macaroons on Saturday. I'm not going to do a healthy recipe. Maybe we'll do a healthy recipe on Sunday. It should be a day of rest. Let's make it a day of rest from sugary stuff. Right, let's see who else we've got. Hey Penny, 180 degrees is the oven temperature. I'm assuming that's what you're asking. Yeah, 180 degrees, Sarah. Most bakes that you do, cake, cookies, pretty much everything, your oven's probably going to need to be at 180 degrees. I think it's gas mark four. I'm not gas mark oven. Um, I'm not sure why, because, you know, I'm not a professional baker. But that seems to be the, uh, the trend. So if you're unsure of what temperature to put your oven at whenever you're baking, Go for 180 because nine times out of ten that's going to be the temperature you need. Right, any more questions? Cake flapjacks. Flapjacks are probably a good idea for a healthy recipe as well because I could probably do like a healthy version of flapjacks with some fruit and nuts and stuff in. I know they have a high con. <gasps> I'm sorry, I can't tell you anymore because the alarm's gone off. Right, let's have a look at how our cookies are cooking. Oh, oh, they've really, oh, I've got to turn off my alarm. Oh, they've spread. They've spread well. They are spreaders. No, I've already said there will be no singing while, I, while we wait. I've been watching, you know, it's been an emotional time for most people out there. People are not in work. People are worried about their incomes. I watched Moana today and burst into tears when she gave Tafiti her heart back. This is what I'm living with right now. This is why I need biscuits. Background, background music, good idea. Let's ask Alexa. Alexa, play Kistory. Right, our cookies need a bit longer. Oh, all right. Oh, Alexa, volume three. Oh, jar rules on the go, yes. Jar rules on the go. Right, we need our cookies to be in for another four minutes. You're going to have to judge this for yourself because everyone's oven is different. So, what you're looking for, see how the cookie cups have kind of puffed up a bit? Don't let that panic you because they will sink back down again. But they're still looking very pale and a lot like liquid, whereas we need them to get a little bit crisper. So check on your cookies in the oven. If they start to go brown or they start to look a bit more solid, take them out. You're better off taking them out. Oh, I'm sorry if I turned on everyone's Alexa. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm gonna have Alexa, add chocolate to my shopping list. <laughs> oh, I hope no one's got their bank account attached to their to their Alexas. Otherwise, I could just order shopping from your Alexa. Right, I'm gonna put this like this because my cookies need another four or five minutes in the oven. I'm gonna turn the oh, I'll turn the temperature up just a little bit just to speed them up. But try to avoid turning the temperature up because it can disrupt the baking of the cookies. I'm gonna put all these bits and bobs in the bin. Alexa, volume 10. Alexa, I love you. Thanks for saying. 
to play. Kistori. I could not find a station named Kistori. Well, you're a liar because there was it was just on, not live, Fibber. I've had to make this PG. There are children watching. There will be no swearing and no rude innuendos from me, no matter what any of you say. What? Um, Alexa, play Kistori. Kistori. Thank you. We've got two minutes left. Oh. We're cheering up the world. Stay in your home. Make some cakes. We need to check on our cookies. This is what life is about. I don't know what you're thinking out there. She's eating too much sugar and she's gone crazy. But generally this is my life. I should be out cutting people's hair. But I'm not. I'm staying home and I'm saving lives. And I'm finding it really difficult. But baking helps. And knowing that people are baking along helps so much. So please send me pictures of your bakes. Because it makes me really happy to know that. I may have taught you something about baking. Right, let's check on our cookies. We don't want them to overbake. Let's check on our cookies. Right, see how they're looking a bit like crispy around the edges? That is much more of what we want. In fact, I'm gonna take them out now, I think. Let's put this up here. We'll turn off our alarm. Watch out for your caramel on the hop. And I'm going to take out the tray of cookies and have a look. The cupcake ones probably need a little bit longer. But I just want to show you these. So see how they're a little bit brown around the edges? They're still quite soft on top, but that is a perfect consistency for a good gooey cookie. If you let them bake more than this, they'll go really crunchy. Whereas you want them to be nice and soft. So. If you're doing tray cookies, they are done, or they should be done. If they still look liquidy in the middle, leave them in a few more minutes, it won't hurt. Um, the thing to remember now is don't move them off the tray yet. When cookies come out of the oven like this, they're pretty much molten. And if you try to move them, they're just gonna go bleh. So we're gonna leave them on the tray, cool down for a bit. I'll put them on this so that you can see what I'm doing. Come on, I'm trusty, isn't it? For anyone doing um, caramel cookie cups, I'm leaving them in the oven a bit longer. Because they're kind of condensed in the muffin tin, it will take a little bit longer to cook the middle bit, and we don't want it to be raw. So, these are our cookies. Let's tip this down so you can see a bit better. If you try to get them off this tray now, see how they tend to, like, fold in half we don't want that this one's already cooled a little bit which is good oh yes we're gonna try and slide them off slide them around so they're not getting stuck a couple of them that are a bit thicker are still a little bit squishy in the middle so I'm gonna stick them in for a bit longer if kids if you've been making your own size cookies and you've made giant ones they may need a little bit longer like a couple of mine do but I'm going to take the ones off that are baked enough. See, this one's like, looks like the surface of the moon, is all I can describe it as. We're going to take them off because they are cooked enough and we don't want them to overcook. 
And then these ones, if you can see in the middle, they're still a little bit like liquidy. I'm going to stick them in just for a couple more minutes. We don't want anyone whoo, eating raw cookie. Let's make them a bit more central. And I'm going to check on our cupcake cookies. Woo! Now then, what you probably will have had if you've put cookies in cupcake cups is this. The cookies have puffed up almost to the size of the top of the cupcake tray. That is absolutely fine. They're going to sink right back down. But I'm going to show you a little trick now to make room for your caramel. I'm going to put these on this tray so we don't damage the surface. You'll know that they're done because they start to go a bit brown on top. We don't want them to be too overcooked. But as they start to go a little bit brown on the surface, you can take them out. Now, you will need a teaspoon, it's a very technical piece of equipment, and all we're going to do is dip it into the middle and squish down the middle. We're going to press in with the back of the spoon and just make a little cup-sized well. The cookie should be quite soft on top. This is why we're doing it while it's still hot. And it should literally just press in quite easily. Don't worry if it goes liquidy in the middle or anything like that. As long as the surface of the top has started to bake and it's got a little bit of colour on, they'll be cooked enough. So I'm going to squish these all in using the back of the spoon we're just pressing it into the cookie like that to make a little bit of a well. It doesn't need to be too deep, just a little bit. We're only going to put a little bit of caramel in there. Now, the only problem with these is it follows the same rule as your flat cookies. If you start trying to take them out of the tin while they're still warm, they're going to crumble and fall apart and you won't be able to get them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour our caramel in while they're still in the baking tray and we're going to let them cool. I'm going to do my very best to get one out so that I can show you what they look like but just leave them in the tin until they're properly cooled. Right, I'm going to lift this up so you can see what I've done with the spoon. If you can see that, I've literally just gone around, pressed in all of the middles so you've got a little hole in each of your cookies. Not a hole, you don't want to get to the bottom of the tin. Be real gentle just to squish it down you should have just a well in your cookie. If you start to get to the bottom of your tin, you've gone too far. Try and kind of smush the biscuit around again so it fills in the bottom. Right, now I'm going to try and get one of these out, only so that I can show you what it looks like. I'm going to try and pick one that's quite well cooked and run my knife around the edge. But as I say, just leave them in the tin until they're properly cooled. That way you can shimmy them out of there and they won't fall apart. Right, I'm getting all the way around the edge. See if it will peel away a little bit. We're not going to worry if it doesn't. See if I can just scoop it out. Whoop. Use my spoon. No, it's too soft. Oh, oh, it tastes really good though. I know I've just licked my spoon, but let's face it, you're not going to eat these, so it's fine. I could lick the whole lot. So, let's just leave them in their tin to cool, and we're going to fill them full of caramel. If you haven't made caramel, you're pretty much done. You can test your cookies. Are you ready? This is what they do in all the videos. Ooh. Oh, chewy cookie. Oh my God. They are really good. If you've taken them out in time, they should be really squidgy in the middle. These are the ones that I put back in because they're a bit runny. They're perfect now as well. Not too brown. Right. So, if you're doing caramel, your caramel should be really good and thick now and cooled down quite a lot. So, what you're going to do is you're going to use your trusty spoon and spoon a little bit of caramel into each of your cookie cups. It's pretty simple. 
But once they cool completely and you can get them out of the tray, if you put these in the fridge, you get like a solid bit of caramel in your cookie and it's just the most, it is amazing. But it's pretty much a heart attack waiting to happen, so. <laughs> Those with diabetes, stay away. One cup per day. Right, let's blob these in there. How's everybody getting on? Is everyone having fun? I've left Kistri on, I'm having a whale of a time. I know I've double dipped, I've double dipped, but it's okay. I won't share these with anyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Thankfully, I haven't really heard of anyone that has had the dreaded virus yet. Um, and I know the NHS are doing really well to keep up with the demand in hospitals. So if you're staying at home, well done. I'll give myself a pat on the back because although I'm not a big fan of not going to work, um, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Every day we stay home, we're helping the NHS and that's what I keep telling myself. So, people that keep calling for appointments, I'm so sorry, I can't come and do your hair, but I will be back in business soon enough. Right, now, this is looking really good. You can judge yourself how much caramel you want to put in. I like a lot of caramel, so I'm just going to go for it. If you have some left, put it in a little bowl and save it, because it's really nice on ice cream, and you can put it on top of puddings, anything you want to make. Put it on your cheese scone, I'm not going to judge, whatever your palate needs. Right, I think that'll do it. I'm going to put this in a bowl and I'm going to save it. Because if we're making brownies, I might just blob it on top of the brownies. There we go, our caramel can stay in there. Oh, that's really nice. Now the last thing I'm going to do, if you're doing caramel cookie cups, excuse me, is I'm going to put a little bit of salt on top. Now, as I don't have any like spoonable salt, I'm going to just grind it into my hand and sprinkle just a little bit of salt onto the caramel. Again, I know it's weird putting salt onto cakes, but the taste will be really good. A little bit of salt on each one. There we go. Now, they need to leave to cool until they can be removed from their... Oh, you know what? This one might have cooled enough already for me to take it out. Oh, it has, it has. Oh, the caramel's still a bit runny. Don't panic. That is your caramel cookie cup. It's still a bit warm, so don't take yours out. Leave them in. But that is what they should look like. Oh, my God. Tastes really good. Okay. Well, we're done. I'm going to check to make sure that there are no questions. Any questions from anyone? I know. Sophie Berry in the house. Mary Berry didn't dance to Kistri while she makes things, does she? Um, any questions? No problem. Hey, Penny and Eve. Hope you're having a good time and you've enjoyed baking with me today. The only thing left to do is to wait for your cookies to cool. Pop them out of the tin, take your time and get around the edges. And then stick them in the fridge and they'll go really nice and gooey in the middle. Enjoy your cookies. Share with your families. And I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock for brownies. I love you all. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.